I'm Artemis Teigen, and I am the director of the Artemis Center for Family Therapy. We're going to be meeting today with two of my very esteemed colleagues, Dr. Marjorie Rand and Dr. Dennis Coffey, to talk about mindfulness in clinical practice. So we're trying to understand how the body and what it holds can help us to become more aware, to move through trauma, to process, to integrate. When I'm talking about dissociation, as you both know, we're talking about a psychological process, a pathological process, that happens uh, when people who have experienced trauma become so overwhelmed with the material that they're experiencing, either a memory or a smell or a sound or they're in a threatening situation, they become so internally triggered and terrified that they literally check out. Um, this can be, on the severe end, it can be so, um, it can be such a crisis that they, it's as if they're in a blackout. They, they lose time, they don't remember where they've been, they don't remember what they did. On the, the very severe end, it's called a dissociative fugue. Um, so we don't want that to happen <laughs> because when people are dissociating, they can't protect themselves. They don't know what they're feeling. They don't know what's going on because it's like they're not in their body. So we want to try to not recreate that when we're in uh, a session. We want to try to make sure that people are in their body and that they're present. So a lot of times when I'm working with survivors and I'm doing somatic work or I'm doing mindfulness work, I'll be saying to them, can you hear me? And how are you feeling? And what's going on? And do you know where you're at, right? And where are your feet? And do you know what you're feeling? And if they say, I don't know, then I'll say, okay, so what I want you to do is open your eyes and sit up and listen to my voice. I want to ground them back in the present. And it's a really important uh, piece that you guys ask about because we don't want to send them out there dissociated and unconnected and who knows what's going to happen. The dissociation originally happens quite early in life. It's the earliest form of defense mechanism that yeah. a person can employ when you can't say anything or get up and walk away or fight back. You just leave your body. Right. So it's a survival strategy yes. in, in, in its origin, yes. Yes. but later becomes a dangerous place to right. be. If we're dissociated, we don't know if, the, if we're in danger. We don't know if we're in a bad situation. So helping them to shift is a big, big deal, right? And sometimes what happens if you don't manage that well is people leave and don't come back, right? And so helping survivors to recognize, A, that they're doing it, and what it feels like, why they were doing it as a defense mechanism, and that it's not a safe way to continue to practice because they don't have access to their feelings. Yeah, right. and that's an important yeah. point. That's why we refer to adult survivors of childhood physical and sexual abuse. Yeah. The dissociative uh, trait is developed in childhood, but in adulthood you often have no idea where that came from. And yeah. that's where you're very good at grounding them yeah. and not flooding them with too much experience. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, excellent questions. Thank you so much <laughs> for uh, being a part of this. I really appreciate the participation. It's wonderful to have you here today. It's a privilege. Thank yes, you. Yes, happy to be here. Thank you.